my dear doctor the station to history taking my dear the case based discussion is going on my dear so my dear listen very carefully the one of the scenario that is given to you a candidate how a candidate should prepare themselves for the five minutes preparation before entering the room this is one of the most important things my dear so what you need to do you need to go through the scenario like the scenario here the patient details here the mrs have a camel a 54 year old woman you see that i just make the circle the mr and mrs have a camel and 54 year old i circled it next you roll you are the doctor circle the doctor in the general medical outpatient clinic so circle the general medical outpatient clinic next the presenting complaint is showed that the progressively worsening dyspnea so please circle the progressively worsening dyspnea so Immediately after that it is written that, that please read the letter printed below when the bell sounds enter the room you have 14 minutes to take a history from the patient and one minute to collect your thoughts and five minutes for discussion you may make notes if you wish referral text dear doctor this patient who is a retired nurse circle the retired nurse has had the progressively worsening dyspnea circle the progressively worsening dyspnea for the past 18 months, circle the 18 months. She has a history of the recurrent UTI, means the urinary tract infection, circle the recurrent urinary tract infection. And is taking long term antibiotic therapy, circle the long term antibiotic therapy. She smokes 20 cigarettes per day and has done for the past 20 years. So it has been the 20 pack years. So write down the 20 pack years. And circle is a significant smoking, and she has no past medical past respiratory history. Means she has no other past respiratory history. She has hypertension. Circle the hypertension, and examination showed definitive bivisal crackles on auscultation of the chest. So definite bivisal crackles. So definite. You may you diagnose the pulmonary fibrosis or maybe the left heart failure. So you can write down by the side and just circle it. And full blood count and urea electrolytes or normal. Circle the full blood count, circle the urea electrolytes, circle the normal. How ECG showed, right bundle branch block. Circle the ECG, circle the right bundle branch block, which can be normal, most of the people's. And I would be grateful if you, you see this patient advice on our management. So it is said that. If you see the patient, means you need to see and advise on our management. So the management is a concern by the GPs. So this is very much important. Use faithfully. Here's the GP. Your task is to interview the patient and based on the history you obtain, construct a differential diagnosis and plan for investigation. So what he said, that your task is to interview the patient, means you need to take the full history. Based on the history you obtain, Construct a differential diagnosis. So you need to make a good differential diagnosis with the differential diagnosis. So task is important, my dear. And plan for investigation. So circle the plan for investigation. You should explain this to the patient. So circle the explain and answer any questions they may have. So circle the questions. So what are the tasks, my dear? The task is to interview the patient, means you need to take the history. Secondly, the differential diagnosis. Thirdly, the plan for investigation. And fourthly, they need to explain to the patients and answer any questions they may have. So these are the four or five tasks usually given to you, my dear. So you need to be very focused on that. And very boldly, it is written that do not examine the patient, my dear. So you are not allowed to examine the patient, my dear. Any notes you make must be handed to the examiners at the end of the station. So yes, whatever the notes that you made, my dear, that will be handed over to the examiner. An examiner or uh, they will take by themselves my dear, the the whatever the notes that you made so yes my dear, doctor a good candidates you need to read the way that i have read all them together and make the circle the important points my dear immediately after that reading these full scenarios or simultaneously read the scenarios and you need to make the notes my dear means the five minutes prepare yourself and you need to five minutes prepare as i said my dear remembering the problem list based on the lectures that you already have seen my dear so according to the lectures as i said that earlier that the five minutes preparation that includes the writing the problem list 
And writing the problem is the common format for all them together. Starting from the number one is a differential diagnosis, second one is an investigation, and third one is a management or treatment. These are the three important formats are common for all of all them together. And fourthly, yes, the concerns minded. So these are the four important points, and along with them, fifth, some of the social concerns or maybe the social social management that you need to do. So these are the formats that you need to follow, my dear. And based on that, that a good candidate should prepare themselves the way that I prepared here. So yes. So you need to pick up the important points that I made the Mrs. Camel, 54, four, four year female, and doctor. It is written that you are the doctor at the General Medical Outpatient Clinic. And this is written that the progressively worsening dyspnea. So you can write down the shortness of breath and exhaustion. So I have written SOBE and for the 18 months. Plus that I've written the plus plus recurrent UTIs, plus long term antibiotics, plus all examination. The findings are consistent with the pulmonary fibrosis. PF signs uh, that the significant smoking history, that is a 20 pack year plus hypertension within the bracket that I write down the right bundle branch block and FBC and even elicolytes are normal. So I've made the two box here. And according to the problem list that you need to write down the differential diagnosis, investigation and management. And I've read, written here the differential diagnosis, first differential diagnosis is the pulmonary fibrosis, the, the recurrent UTI is the antibiotics, that is the nitrofurantoin usually given for the long-term antibiotics, and then the drug induced pulmonary fibrosis. I've written here the I'd like to Exclude the other differential diagnosis of the pulmonary fibrosis, that is the occupation related, the asbestos exposure, or maybe the pharmas like the extensive allergic enzymatis, or maybe the, any of the history of the pigeons, which are for the extensive allergic enzymatis. And also to exclude the chronic tissue disorders to ask the systemic review, so that will be excluded, that is a RA and SLA. Secondly, because of the significant smoking history that she has, so yes. Of course, the COPD should be the diagnosis uh, and the differential diagnosis, or maybe the COPD may be associated with the pulmonary fibrosis as well. And as because of significant smoking. And thirdly, as because of the shortness of breath and exhaustion progressively worsening dyspnea, so I need to exclude that whether she has the chronic heart failure she may have, or she, maybe she, she may be associated with that chronic heart failure. So these are the three differential diagnoses that I have put here. And the Investigation, the first differential diagnosis is the pulmonary fibrosis. So the diagnostic test should be the HRCD test and the pulmonary function test. And then autoimmune profiles and chest x-ray and CBC and FEV1 and FBC ratios should be done to, to evaluate the COPD. And also to do the echocardiography that I have written here to exclude the chronic heart failure. And management, always, my dear, always remember in your mind the where, when and what to treat. So while, of course, based on the patient scenarios that we say the shortness of brain exhaustion, 18 months, so I need to evaluate the severity uh, right at this moment of the shortness of breath. And based on that, the, the patient will be treated. And when, similarly, the, we need to go for some of the investigations that the report should be done. And after getting the reports back in our hands, then we need to start the treatment. And what definitely the treatment should be started uh, based on the diagnostic confirms. Next is the concerns. So I'll ask about the concerns because the concerns are important points, my dear. The first is the differential diagnosis, second is the investigation, third is the management, fourth is the concern, and fifth is because she is a significant smoking history, the 20 pack here. So these ladies should be evaluated and should be counseled for the smoking cessation. And if not uh, successful, then we need to refer her to smoking cessation clinic. So I've written here. And very important that she's a retired nurse, so uh, some of the uh, social uh, social problems will be there. Uh, retired nurse, so what will be the uh, livelihood and what will be the ways of the family running and uh, how and how many family members are dependent on her. So regarding a, a little bit discussion should be done. So this is the sixth number problem list that I've made my dear. So this is a common problem list. So starting with the differential diagnosis, second one is investigation, third one is management, fourth is a concern. So these four are will be the common for all cases, my dear. But specifically for this case, fifth number is the smoking cessation clinic, means the smoking cessation, and sixth number is the social problems retired now. So we'll evaluate after getting the history from her. And also the, the formats that you need to, the second step 
in your you know uh, best approach there is a writing the formats my dear writing the formats mean that i have given the five bundle packs all together dividing into the different data collections so how to do that so so that i divide into the five bundle packs or the first bundle packs it includes the introduction second is verifying the gps data third one is the history of presenting complaints that includes the 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 long list of things all together means the odp means the onset duration progression the associated features accelerating factors relieving factors and then activity of daily lives the disease interactions and also the severity and scoring uh, if the scoring is there or the severity of the presenting complaints that should be evaluated so including that that all are included to the history of presenting complaints and next is the previous investigation so these all five uh, one two three four is the four important points included the first bundle back second bundle back the systems review so the head to toe the all the questions that should be asked in the second bundle back the systems review third bundle pack is the past medical history that includes the mi death threats and with or without the t's the four t's that you need to remember and along with the drug history and allergic histories and that includes the abc and last is the family history so the past medical history drug history allergic history and family history these three included into the third bundle pack and the fourth bundle pack is the social history that the most size or most size that you can remember so yes the 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 components that we'll discuss uh, and you already have gone through the lectures and you will see that I will ask the different questions here and feed bundle packs that is the concern summary and explain all together. So these are the five bundle packs keeping them together and if you write down here before entering the room so you can remember or you don't need to see them and you can take the history very smoothly my dear. Like the way that I said the casting professionalism means that that should be the correct A for appropriate, S for systematic and thorough and of course that the thorough and fluent manner or professional manner that you can take the history and collecting all the data all together and if you need write them all them together here so you need to ask uh, permissions from her that i need to write while discussing with you so is it all right or, or not so you can write the write down the other other side so and, and 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 take the important data and after that you you present your case my two examiners so my dear doctor listen very carefully one of the ss tips and the top tips that i'd like to share here so this is a lady of 54 year old female like the mrs camel and she is presenting with the shortness of breath on exertion for the 18 months and this is written in your scenario that is the progressively worsening disney so progressively worsening disney the single diagnosis in your hands my dear the pulmonary fibrosis what i say the progressively worsening disney or shortness of of shortness of breath on exertion the first diagnosis you should think of the pulmonary fibrosis yes my dear doctor the pulmonary fibrosis should be the first list my dear in your differential diagnosis now the whenever you think about the pulmonary fibrosis you should think about the doc should be excluded before diagnosing the case of the cryptogenic fibrosing alveolitis that the idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis the doc what does it doc really means the D4 drugs, O4 occupation, and C4 connective tissue disorders. And D4 drugs that already we know that the drugs are responsible for the pulmonary fibrosis, there are the bundle packs, the BCS man gold, B for busulfan gliomycin, C for cyclosomine, S for sulfacilogen. And the man bundle packs, then M for methotrexate, A for imidron, N for nitrofurantan. And gold is gold. So these are the drugs causing pulmonary fibrosis. And the occupations, so there are long list of occupational disorders that you will see that uh, different occupations can cause the uh, pulmonary fibrosis. But among them, the most important usually encounter in your exams, my dear, that is the uh, exposure to the asbestos. What I say, the asbestos exposure, especially the sheep ear working workers, that you need to evaluate that. And second occupation that you need to think about, that the, especially the, you need to think about the extrinsic allergic alveolitis. And you know the farmer's lung that you said that's so the occupation should be the farmers and the pigeon racers that you need to ask that uh, history might have to evaluate the extrinsic allergic alveolitis. So once again, the evaluating the first differential diagnosis of pulmonary fibrosis under the headings of the docs should be excluded before diagnosing your case for the cryptogenic fibrosis alveolitis. Next to the pulmonary fibrosis, this the other chronic lung disease can be causing the shortness of breath and exhaustion 
So he has a chronic lung disease that includes, that I said, my chronic bronchiolisma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disorders, and the bronchiectasis. And of course, that you need to remember the chronic pulmonary embolism also can be a good differential diagnosis for the shortness of breath and exertion. And these are the chronic lung disease can cause this shortness of breath and exertion. Other than the chronic lung disease, means the lung disease, shortness of breath and exertion, and then the heart disease. So the heart is a chronic heart failure due to whatever the reasons might be. Means the lungs and the heart should be evaluated in these scenarios, the shortness of breath and exertion. So if you made the good differentials in your hands, so starting with the pulmonary fibrosis due to the docs, docs should be excluded by the before saying that the idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. And secondly, as I say, the other chronic lung disease that should be evaluated, like starting from the chronic bronchial asthma. So in a patient with chronic bronchial asthma, so you need to evaluate the patient having the cough, having the wheezes, and also the, the, the fluctuations, the diurnal variations, or the symptoms, or the symptoms variations, will be there or not, or the nocturnal symptoms, and the morning dipping. So these should be evaluated in case of chronic bronchial asthma. And in case of COPD, the cough is the main symptoms with the sputum. So this is the main symptom, the cough with the sputum, might and the COPD and the significant smoking history. Very short, short important points, might you need to write them down, that's what I'm saying, my dear. Next is the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, that is a bronchitis. So bronchitis will have the sputum, propyl sputum, purulent sputum, and the hemoptysis, maybe the reason, and maybe the presentation. So these two important things that you need to remember within the brackets, so the wrong cases so you can evaluate and the chronic pulmonary embolism yes the chronic pulmonary embolism the thrombomeric disorders so the patient should have essentially some of the thrombotic disease like the dvt the deep vein thrombosis, and we will discuss in other cases for the pulmonary embolism regarding the well scoring and all them together. So, but at least the DVT within the bracket. So, yes, unilateral painful leg swelling, whether this patient has or not. So, in that way, the unit formulate you can formulate the diagnosis and the chronic heart failure next to the chronic lung, the chronic heart failure. So, chronic heart with the heart bundle bags. Already know the heart bundle bags. What does it mean? Means the chest pain, shortness of breath, palpitation and the loss of contrast is in the leg swelling by the so Asking these five important points, it does mean that you can exclude the heart disease, not the reasons. Means only the shortness of breathing exertion without chest pain, without palpations, without loss of consciousness, without leg swelling. And the symptoms are exertional. So you can exclude, not the heart is not the reason for causing the symptoms, my dear. So with these knowledge, my dear doctor, that you are already prepared, a good candidate, you have this preparation in your hands with this knowledge that you need to evaluate the case. Now you need to enter into the room and you will start your consultation smiley. So now let's see that how the consultations are going on with the important assist tips in building the discussions, how the discussions will going on and how the things can be done and to gain the all the data that we call the optimized collecting the data, my dear, the information from the patients, how that can be done. So we'll, we'll learn from here, my dear, specifically based on this particular case, my dear. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Dr. Sa, one of the doctor in this general medical outpatient clinic here today. So yes, my dear doctor, immediately enter the room that you need to greet yourself and introduce yourself, my dear. Starting with a good morning, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, sir or ma'am. Always start with the madam or ma'am or sir. These are one of the important tips and tricks, my dear. And immediately after that, you introduce yourself. You should start with your name, my dear. Your name is Dr. My name is Dr. Shumantu Kumar Saha. So you need to tell that your son name, my dear. So the Dr. Saha. And the, the particular scenario we'll have, it will be written there, the, who you are. So it is written in the scenario that you are the doctor at the general medical outpatient clinic. So my dear, be very careful who you are from where. So this is one of the important tips and tricks. So if it is written there, you are the registrar in rheumatology clinic. So you must tell them you are the registrar in rheumatology clinic. You are the SHO in, in general medical clinic. You are the SHO in cardiology clinic. So please be careful what is written on, the mark, on your scenario, my dear. 
So there's a way that I introduce yourself uh, to, to my patients, my dear. So this is the introduction part that I have already done. And immediately after that, the second important point is uh, verifying the GP's letter. So verifying the GP's letter should be the way that I'm saying, my dear, to my patients. So the verifications of the GP's letter should be the way that I'm doing, my dear. Just follow me. So ma'am, I got a letter from your GP that has been said that um, you are Mrs. Camel? Yes. All right. And you are 54 years female? Yes. All right. All right. And you have some problem in your chest, right? So verifications of the GP's letter is really important, my dear. Verifications means that to whom that you are talking, that the name, my dear. So you need to confirm or you can start in that way. So ma'am, before starting the consultation, I would like to confirm the few informations written here in your GP's letter that you are Mrs. Carroll. Yeah. And you are 54 years old. Yes, doctor. Yes. So these two important informations, along with that, you have some of the problem in your chest. So these are the three important things that you need to confirm regarding the verification of the GP's letter. And immediately after that, there is the history of presenting complaint that you need to enter into the full scenarios. Then you need to talk regarding the history of presenting complaint, that the shortness of breath and exhaustion, that is the progressive worsening of the dyspnea for the last 18 months. So you need to work on and starting with the onset duration progression. Then the associated features, then aggravating factors, and exacerbating factors, then the relieving factors, and then activity of daily lives and the disease interactions and also disease severity measurement altogether. So now it starts with the history of presenting complaints and the evaluation, all the things all together. So let me start by asking her regarding the history of presenting complaints. So ma'am, so that you say that you have some problem in your chest that I have seen here that is written in your GB's letter. So could you please tell me more details about it? What happened to you? Actually, doctor, what happened? I'm facing uh, some breathing difficulties. All right. So you said some of the breathing difficulties. So, so Mrs. Camel, the breathing difficulties, could you please tell me uh, the exactly when did it start? It starts about uh, 18 months back. 18 months back. Exactly the 18 months back you yeah, said, no, right? So, so Mrs. Camel, did you say that 18 months back you started the shortness of breath on exhaustion, right? And, yes. and, and tell me uh, this shortness of breath, uh, how, how did it start? Like, is it something that like all of a sudden or just over a few days that you felt no, it? it was a progressive uh, deteriorating. Yeah. All right. So you say the progressively deteriorating day by day. So, so tell me, uh, is there any other features along with the difficulty in breathing that you were suffering, like the cough and no coughing doctor. out any sputum? No, doctor. Uh, I have no cough. All right. Any sputum, coughing out any sputum? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes I'm coughing out sputum, but uh, that's very small in amount. And have you seen any of the blood in the sputum? No, no, never, doctor. All right. So, is there anything else like that along with your shortness of breath that you say that you don't have cough, but you sometimes you cough out some of the yeah. sputum, right? Uh, along with that, you have the chest pain. No, doctor. All right. You don't have the chest pain. Okay. So, so Mrs. Camel, um, that you say that you have the shortness of breath and exhaustion, uh, right? Uh, could you please tell me, is there anything else make it worse, the shortness of breath and exhaustion? Shortness of breath or the breathing difficulty. Yeah, but I uh, usually I could walk uh, for a long distance earlier, but nowadays I cannot walk uh, more than hundred meters uh, on flat. Right. Uh, if I keep walking, uh, it gives uh, it um, is with my breathlessness. All right. So so you say that uh, walking fast make yeah. you breathless, and what about the uh, climbing stairs? Climbing stairs, uh, no doctor. Have you felt any, any difficulties in climbing stairs? Like sometimes the people describe that, that they earlier they could make it like the four or five flights of stairs they can climb easily and that getting deteriorating day by day nowadays they can no, say doctor, that. No doctor, I didn't notice anything like that. All right. So the, as the steps is that, that you started you questioning that is the onset, duration and progression. 
And you got the right answer. She she felt it you know, all, all, over the few days or maybe the months that is, she felt that she is difficulty. She is having the difficulty in breathing, and that 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 she noticed that that she cannot uh, walk uh, right more than a hundred meter nowadays. So so these are all the things along with that she have some occasional coughing or sputum, but no cough, uh, regular cough. And she she doesn't have any of the uh, hemoptysis, and also she doesn't have the chest pain. So this is the smallest uh, data that you already collected. So my dear, what I'm saying that you need to ask very very clearly, crystal clear, when did it start, how it is progressing, and how 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 you are feeling right at this moment. So these are the questions is really important. So Mrs. Campbell, that you say that you felt the 18 months back the difficulty in breathing. And you say this is progressive in nature. Yes. And you say that nowadays you cannot walk more than 100 meter. Even I cannot do my household works. Yes, that is really important. So then I'm asking that household works that you cannot do. So, so definitely your symptoms are interrupting your activity yes. of daily living. So is there anything are, are interrupted like the people are sometimes saying that the bedding, cooking, Dressing, yeah, driving, I eating. I uh, vacuum my you know, floor nowadays. I, I become very breathless at the moment. Breathless, all right. Whatever the dressing that sometimes the people say, they even address dressing themselves. Mm, and no, that make, not really. All right. So you cannot do the activity of daily living at home, even you are getting breathless. Yeah. All right. Sorry for that, Mrs. Kevin. So I understand that uh, you are really suffering right at this moment. So... I understand that the right at this moment you are really suffering, right? Yes, doc. All right. So, is there anything else that I see that in your GPS data that say that you have some of the infections in your private parts, and that during water works that you have some of the difficulty, like the uh, as I've seen that you have some of the infections, uh, and then it happens for a for a long period of time. So, uh, what about that? Could you please tell yes, me more doctor, about it? Yes, doctor. I'm suffering from uh, recurrent uh, urinary tract infections. All right. Yes. It's about uh, about ten years back. I All was right. firstly diagnosed with uh, UTI, and from then I am taking some antibiotics. Antibiotics prescribed by my GP. All right. So, what about the antibiotics? What is the name of this antibiotics? Oh, doctor. I'm sorry. I cannot remember the name, but I I took uh, about uh, fifty milligram of this antibiotic every once night. a day or right, yeah. every night so you, you have been checking these antibiotics for how long did you say it? like 10 years almost like 10 years all right still you are taking these antibiotics yes, yes. all right so so you say that you have some of the recurrent utis for the last 10 years and your gp prescribing the 50 milligram of that yes. particular tablets every night that you are taking yeah. all right so along with that uh, i would like to ask more few few other questions questions that is really important for me um, regarding your occupation so mm -hmm. other than other than this drug like that like the uh, antibiotics any other medication that you're taking yes doctor i am hypertensive all right uh, for that i'm taking uh, benzoflumethazide of uh, 2.5 right. milligram every all right. day all right. and also uh, i'm taking lisinopril all right of uh, 20 milligram all right so you are taking two uh, BB tablets, right? The blood pressure tablets, yes. right? Other than these, any other medications? No, doctor. All right. So, did you feel any problems with these medications, like the blood pressure tablets that you were taking, like lisinopril no, and bendoflunitazines? No, no problems no, with that. No. So, are you taking these medications regularly? Yes, I'm taking them. All right. So, Mrs. Camel, uh, could you please tell me, are you allergic to any medications or anything else? Yes, doctor. I'm allergic to elastoplast. All right. So, no other drugs or no other medications? Uh, no, no, not really. All right. So, so, so Mrs. Camel, uh, uh, next to that, the, you said that you have the difficulty in breathing, right? So, could you please tell me, are you, are you a smoker? Yes, doctor. Um, I, I do smoke. All around. right. So, how many sticks uh, per day? For how long that you are taking? Around twenty sticks per day for twenty years. All right. So, it's really a significant number that you are <laughs> yes, taking, doctor. right? So, so have you ever failed to quit it? Yes, doctor. I, I felt like uh, I should uh, stop should smoking, want. but I never tried. 
too. All right. So, so, so you have to stop the smoking, uh, Mrs. Camel. So for that, uh, if, you, if you need that, we can refer you to the smoking cessation clinic. So that is really helpful. They are really helpful to deal with that and to help the people to, to stop the smoking. Is that all right? Okay, doctor. All right. So, yes, uh, Mrs. Camel, another important thing is that you say that you have the difficulty in breathing, but you don't have the chest pain. You have, do you have the chest pain? No, doctor. Any palpitations? No. Any loss of consciousness any time? No, doctor. No. Any leg swelling? No, doctor. All right. So, you say that you don't have any chest pain, no palpitations, neither racing heart, sometimes the people mm. are swelling that. No, doctor. And uh, no loss of consciousness earlier. No, never. And no leg swelling as well. All right. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So, Mrs. Camel, that we we ask a lot of questions, right? So, I see that your GP has done some of the tests before yes. coming here, like some of the blood tests, and that's really good. Uh, some blood tests and some of the kidney functions as well. That are absolutely normal. So, apart from them, any other tests that you underwent? No, doctor. All right. So now the systems reviews. We have already asked about the introduction and the verifying the GPS data and the history of presenting complaint and the previous investigations all together. Now the systems review. Now we'll ask the, all the questions from the head to toe, the different variety of the questions. The way that I'm doing my day, just follow me and you need to do that. Because the systems review is written in the mark sheet, so you must do that. If you don't do that, you will get the less marks not here. So Mrs. Camel, I'd like to ask a number of questions. And most of the answers are usually yes or no. Okay. So is that all right? Yes. All right. So could you please tell me, do you have any headaches? No, doctor. All right. Any problems in your eyes like the dry eyes? No, doctor. Dry mouth? No, doctor. Red eyes? No. Gritty eyes? No, doctor. Runny nose? No, doctor. Oral ulcer? No. Any facial rashes? No, doctor. I have occasional flushing of my face. All right. Occasional flushing, right? I got it. So, uh, is there anything else along with this occasional flushing that you have? No. Oh, nice. So, any neck swelling? No. All oh, right. So, getting down to the chest, right? You said that you have no chest symptoms, right? Like no chest pain, no palpitations, right? Apart from the shortness of breath and occasional coughing or some of the sputum. Yes. And you said the sputum, right? I, I missed it. So, is there anything else that you have seen the sputum color or whatever, whatever with that? No, this is normal whitish in color. All right. So getting down to the tummy, do you have any of the tummy pain, tummy swelling? No, doctor. All no. right. What about your bowel and bladder habits? Uh, I have occasional constipation, doctor, but uh, it uh, it uh, doesn't bother me very All much. All right. So yes, you have say some of the uh, heart stool that constipation yes. that you said. Whatever do you water works right at this moment that you say the recurrent UTIs that you have means that you know tract infections. And uh, is there any problems right at this moment in the yeah. past? Right? Yes. Any any I'm discomfort? Having, yeah, I have discomfort uh, during uh, my water works, and uh, I have burning sensation sometimes. All right. So other than you don't have any of the tummy pain no, and tummy doctor. swelling and even a low end pain sometimes, you know, no, no, low back pain no. or something like that. No. Well, getting down to the leg smile, so do you have any difficulty in rising or standing from the chair or sitting position or from squatting position? No, not really. Not really. Any difficulty in the raising the arms over the head? No, doctor. Like uh, combing difficulty no, or something no, like no, that. Doctor. So getting down, so do you have any of the joint pains, any skin rashes, any high, any parts of your body? No, no, doctor. So, Getting down to the more right, uh, do you have any 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 muscle pain, any any pins and needles in your hands and feet? No, doctor, but I have occasional leg cramps at night. Oh, right. Is it bothering you a lot? Yeah, sometimes it's uh, make uh, make my sleep uh, difficult. All right, I got it. Okay, so anything else other than what I asked these questions? Anything else that you have? You said the flushing and the leg cramps occasionally. No, no. no. All right. So, Mrs. Camel, apart from this, right, do you have any fever? No. Any fatigue feeling? No, doctor. Any weight loss? No. Any sweating? No, doctor. All right. Any lumps and bumps in any parts of your body? No. All right. And do you prefer any hot or cold, any temperature preferences? No, doctor. Apart from that, right, are you anxious right at this moment? Means 
is there any problems in your mood right at this moment? Like the people say sometimes, the depressed, and the anxious, whatever do you? I'm actually tensed about uh, what happened to my lungs. All right, I understand. So these are the, all the questions that we already asked regarding the system review. And head to toe, the questioning is really important because you see that head to toe questioning that I found that she has some the flushing, hot flushes uh, along with the leg cramps as well. So these are not that significant symptoms that the difficulty in breathing she had, but, mm -hmm. but she has some of the some symptoms and also some constipation that she said that, but these are not really bothering to her. Apart from the shortness of breath, she is really concerned. She already said that I understood that she, she is really concerned about the, what happened to her lungs. So these are the systems review mind that you need to do the way that I have said. Immediately after the second bundle packs, the systems review, the third is a past medical history, drug history, allergic history, and the family history. So as because you have seen that we already talked, I already discussed about the drug history and allergic history, so you don't need to do that once again. You just skip, only you need to do the past medical history and the family history. So let's do that. So asking the past medical history, Mrs. Camel, could you please tell me any, any history earlier like the heart attacks? No, doctor. Jaundice? No. Any tuberculosis earlier? No, doctor. Any rheumatic fever? No. Any high blood pressure? Yes, you are, yes. You, are, you, are you are high blood pressure and you are also taking the Medicine. two tablets right, yes. right at this moment. So any epilepsy? No. All right. Any diabetes? No, doctor. Any strokes? No. So Mrs. Camel, that you say that you only have been suffering from the high blood pressure and for that reason you are taking two medications and these medications are not having any of the problems with that. That's really appreciating. Now, as because you already have taken the drug history and allergic histories, so now the family history. So, Mrs. Camel, could you please tell me any of the family members are suffering from the same category of the problems that you are suffering? No, doctor. All right. Any other family members are suffering from diabetes, high blood pressure, high blood cholesterol, any heart disease that you have? Yes, doctor. My husband is suffering from diabetes. All right. And my uh, elder son is also diabetic. All right. And any other problems of your, any other any other family members are suffering from any category or any kind of diseases? Yes, doctor. Uh, my youngest son, uh, who has uh, got a cerebral palsy. All right. So, how many children that you have? I have two sons. All right. So you have the elder son is diabetic, and also your younger son is. Uh, having a cerebral pulse, pulse, right. So, anything else that you'd like to add here in family members? In yeah, family doctor, history? my mother died of uh, breast cancer. All right. And my father had a stroke and he died of stroke. And he had got heart disease as well. All right. So, Mrs. Kamal, I'm sorry to hear that your father died of uh, heart attack and stroke, that you say it right. Yes. So, one of the important tips and tricks here, the, the lady is saying about her family history, the family members are suffering from the uh, elder son is diabetic and the younger son is cerebral palsy and the husband is also diabetic and with her father is died of heart attack as well as uh, having the stroke earlier and she, her mother is also having diabetes, breast, cancer. breast cancer, died of breast cancer. Yeah. All right. So, so these are the things that, that, that you need to be very empathized with the patient and saying at least uh, sorry, that I'm sorry, Mrs. Camel, uh, to hear the, the family members and uh, your father and mother died of some of the diseases. So saying that a bit of empathize is <laughs> getting the number in the patients and uh, welfare, means the G skills, my dear. And getting down the third, means the fourth bundle back is social history. So now I'd like to ask the social history, the important questions is very important, the social history. So now let's start with that. The social history includes the marital status, then the occupation, then the smoking and the social history. And then the smoking, alcohol, it is the drugs as well as the, and the sexual history, if it is really relevant. It's because in her case, the sexual history is not relevant. So you just cut it down. So you need to ask only the marital status, occupation, and the social backgrounds like the housing as well as the smoking alcohol and illicit drugs that's enough for her case so let's discuss about the social history so mrs camel that i understand that you are married right at this moment and you have the two children and with your family members so 
Uh, and uh, could you please tell me what is your occupation? I am a retired nurse. All right. So how do you how do you do right at this moment, or how can you run your family members and getting some of the economical support? My and, husband is a mechanic. All right. And uh, I'm so, not uh, doing any work right at this right moment. Right at this moment, I understand. So uh, you said about that the, uh, your husband is a worker right at this moment. Now asking about you uh, uh, regarding your housing, what about your housing? Means that how many, means, uh, means give me some of the description about your housing, how many, in, in which story that you are staying or sometimes the people say that I used to stay in the second floor. No, I'm living in the first floor. Too. First floor. So, uh, Sometimes the people describe their housing pattern. So the people sometimes say that they get breathlessness and uh, climbing the stairs or the flights of stairs. So they need to come down from the second or third floor to the first floor. So is there something like that in your house? No, doctor, I'm, I'm living in the first floor. First floor, all right. So yes, Mrs. Kemal, that I see that you have the two children. So uh, so you have you, you, the children are dependent on you, right? Yes, doctor. All right. So, is there anything else that uh, you need? Uh, any support in your in your home? Actually, doctor, my um, younger son uh, who has got cerebral palsy, right. I have to take care of him. All right. Because he's fully dependent he's on fully me. Fully dependent. But on nowadays, you. due to my uh, breathlessness, yes, it has yes. been very difficult for me to look after him. Yes, I understand. Right. So. So apart from that, right? I'm asking about. Uh, you said already you are you are a significant smoker, and you, yes. you already agreed to go for smoking cessation clinic to yeah. quit it. And after that, uh, do you drink alcohol? No, doctor. All right, that's fine. That's absolutely mm -hmm. fine. So yes, one of the tips and tricks that uh, she agreed to go for the smoking cessation clinic. So you should appreciate that. And she's not drinking alcohol, so this is also appreciable. So saying something. In between, so this looks to be a really a good professional talking that you are doing, my dear, with the with the patients. So uh, apart from the smoking and alcohol history that I have found, that do you, do you take any any recreational medic drugs? No, doctor, never. All right, excellent. The best and the best and the best course ever in your experience in your whole life, my dear. So uh, this is all about the social history that we already take the marital status, occupation and the social backgrounds like the housing and uh, she is staying at the first floor, not having any, any issues, but the issues is that she has to uh, take care of, of her younger son that is a, a patient and she, he is a patient of cerebral palsy, so she has to take care 24 by 7. So, but because of her symptoms uh, she is suffering so she is unable to do so so she needs uh, support at home so this is really one of the important issues so you, you should take it out as a as a social social history the retired nurse and the and the cerebral palsy the younger son you need to write down here so yes immediately after that right uh, the the fifth bundle pack the concern summary and explain all together you need to do that so regarding concern, it is written that in mark sheet that you need to six, you need to detect and you need to address the concern. So the three important points, my dear, the six detects and uh, address the particular concern. Even though the patient already said that she is worried about what happened to her lungs, so once again you need to ask about that because it is written the seeking and detecting and addressing the full the patient's concerns altogether. So Mrs. Camel. Could you please tell me, is there any particular concern right at this moment? Yes, doctor. Uh, could you please tell me what actually happened to my lungs? Yes, uh, Mrs. Kevin, what happened to you after taking the full history from you that what I found? And, uh, and before giving the right answers, actually, what happened to you? So I'd like to summarize, actually, uh, the data that I found. And after that, I, I can give the right answers. Is it all right? Yes, doctor. So, Mrs. Camel, that you are 54 years old, retired nurse. Yeah. And you, you say that you have the difficulty in breathing that, that worsening day by day, and that is going on for the last 18 months. And 
and it is worsening in that way and to that extent that you are not able to do the normal activities of your life and you are really concerned that you need to take care of your son as well so yeah. it is really also a matter of problem right at this moment and you say that your gp is prescribing for the last 10 years for one antibiotics and that drug that you need to take for the last 10 years for your recurrent urinary tract infections and you are also taking um, uh, your smoker a significant number of smoking that has been taken for the last 20 years and you are high blood pressure patients and you are taking the two medications for that but you say that you don't have any other problems with that medications and you say that you are allergic to elastoplast and that, that you say some of the family members are suffering from I, 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 your husband is suffering from the diabetes and your son is uh, suffering from the diabetes yeah. and uh, your father is also died of stroke and having heart disease and your mother is uh, died of uh, uh, breast cancer so and also you, the younger son is a patient of the cerebral palsy and along with that uh, one one important thing that uh, the that you say that you you are only having the uh, and you don't take alcohol that you don't take any recreational medications yes. so all these data that what you found uh, apart from that is there anything else that I left behind I didn't ask you that should be ever off no no doctor like uh, uh, any any hobbies that you sound so right or your family members is any hobbies like uh, um, any exposure to asbestos or uh, like the pigeons racing or something like that oh yes say? doctor uh, yeah. my uh, elder son he's very fond of pigeons so he keeps them uh, in our home and i have to uh, look after them for sometimes like when he's outside so or what do you do actually what kind of categories works yeah, that you need to I look need after to feed them occasionally oh, or yeah. and I, I do clean them sometimes from the cages right yeah yeah all right so you need to look after the pigeons that the yeah, son yeah. is, uh, is fond of taking the pigeons right so yes my dear doctor listen very carefully the most important tips and tricks after summarizing one of the important questions that you need to ask to your patients that is there any left behind any points any important significant points or significant important history point or data that you left behind you didn't ask that should be error of the way that you need to ask, my dear, definitely the patient will help you to give you the right answer, anything that you left by. Any important data is really important. Like the way that, yes, Mrs. Camel, could you please tell me, is there anything else that I didn't ask you that should be ever up? And that is really significant and that's really important for, 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 for making your diagnosis. So seeking that to induce her, to incite her, to say that any left by points, like the way that I, I tried myself but I just asked a very specific question because in, in, my, in my data or in my uh, notes that I've written that the pigeons that, that is missed. And that's why I just took the history and, and I found an important point that his son is a pigeons uh, uh, and uh, fond of taking the pigeons at home. And she need to take care and uh, washing, the, washing them and feeding them and washing the cages as well. So this is a good exposure to the pigeons. So having a chance of the extrinsic allergic alveolitis. So keep it in your mind in that way. So these will be in your problem list uh, that will be added in your diagnosis as well. So these are the things in the social history and the, sorry, the summarization. And after that, the, coming back to the explanation. An explanation should be the way that I'm saying to her because she already explained the concerns. So Mrs. Kangal, after listening to the full history that the data that I collected, what I found, I found that you have got a disease, we call it the pulmonary fibrosis. It does mean that your lungs are damaged by scaring of your lung tissues. And uh, why that happened to you? The answer is you have been taking for a long period of time in one antibiotic and we we know the antibiotic usually prescribed by the GPs to the patients, like the recurrent UTI, that is the nitrofurantoin, we call it. And I think the most likely the nitrofurantoin, the drug that you have been treating for a long period of time, like the 10 years, that is the reason for causing the damage in your lungs. And that's why, uh, to that extent, actually, basically, that's why you are getting breathlessness and difficulty in breathing for a long period of like 18 months. And to that extent that you are not able to do your daily activities right at this moment. Does okay, it make doctor. sense? 
Is it a very serious something? I shouldn't say that is very serious, but uh, as because uh, your lungs have been damaged in that extent that you are feeling difficulty in breathing. So as because we have picked up the reasons actually why this has happened to you. So so yes, we have some of the measures to to make you give some of this uh, comfort and also to get some of the relief from this kind of difficulty of breathing that you are suffering right at this moment. Does it make sense what I'm saying? Yes, doctor. But by any chance, smoking uh, causing my uh, symptoms? Yes, uh, of course, the smoking is one of the important reasons for damaging your lungs. So the smoking can, can be added uh, to damage your lungs. And, uh, the, and the disease that we can think about, we call it the COPD, the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So maybe the smoking can already have caused to damage your lungs by the way that I say it. Yes, so smoking is an added feature that, that can cause your lung damage. So that's why we are planning to to refer you to the smoking cessation clinics. So that will be the right planning and the best planning for, for quit the smoking as early as possible. Is it all right? Yeah, doctor, but I'm concerned that uh, as my symptoms are progressing, so will, you, will I be able to take care of my son or not? Yes, uh, yes, this is possible because as I said that we have already picked up the reasons actually why this is happening to you. So the nitrofurant, the drug as you are taking. So what we can do, we, we can make a good planning for that. The drug should be stopped immediately after this consultation and also further planning that we do. And one of the planning should be something like that, that we stop the drug so that the, that drug will not damage your lungs to, to more and more. The lung tissue that, that we have right at this moment, so yes, that can be that can be improved. Yes, we hope, we hope and believe that after having some of the treatments that you can have definitely, you can, you can take care of your child and you can do your daily activities and we have some of the treatments. Yes. Yes, Mrs. Camel. Is it all right what yeah, I'm saying? Doctor. So, so Mrs. Camel is summarizing all them together. So what I'm planning for you. So what I'm planning, the first of all, that, um, that the first of all, that I'd like to confirm the diagnosis. And uh, after this consultation, what I'm doing, what I, I'm going to do, I'd like to examine you first. Yeah. And to confirm my diagnosis at the bedside and uh, the clinical suspicions that, that, that direct me to go for further investigations. So, and also uh, as, as because I have, I have already uh, discussed with you the, the most likely the disease or condition that you are suffering, we call it the pulmonary fibrosis. So what I'm going to do, I'd like to take an appointment for the CT scan of your chest and that we call the HRCT. So that will be done in a, in a week. And also you and uh, taking another appointment for the lung function test. And after getting the reports back in our hands, so we'll see it once again with you and explain the, what we found and, uh, and some of the blood tests along with that, we, we would like to do that to confirm and to exclude the other possibilities and other diagnostics altogether. And, uh, and, also, and also, as because that you, you already said, maybe you know, some, some people are really concerned about that they are feeling the heart disease or not, so we need to evaluate some of the heart uh, test as well because in your ECG some tracing problem uh, maybe maybe you, you already have been acquired and uh, and then acknowledged uh, by the GPs there's some of the abnormal tracing some sometimes yes, the people are really but concerned. I don't think oh, I have right. any that's good problem. that's good right but yes it's because you have some of the problem in your chest so we'll do some of the heart evaluations by doing the okay. chest x-ray and also the the echocardiography so we, we'll take an appointment but the main things that the focusing the taking upon the CT scan and also the lung function test and getting the reports back in our hands that uh, we'll discuss along with you. And you'll be referred to the lung specialist. We call the pulmonologist. So you'll see him in the next week with all the reports back in uh, back with all together. And in in between, what we I'm going to do, I'm I'm referring you to the smoking cessation clinics, mm -hmm. and you'll see them, and they're very good person and very good team and they will they will deal with you how to quit it as uh, immediately after that as because that you are retired nurse and uh, right at this moment you, you are not able to take care of your sons until the time the treatment starting and getting some of the relief from there mm -hmm. so what we can do uh, yes we can take some of the social support so you can get some of the supports at home 
to take care of your son, the, okay. uh, your son is suffering from the cerebral palsy that you say. It. So these are the things that we can do and also stopping the medications that you are taking like the nitroprotein for urinary tract infarctions, maybe the alternatives, the medicines can be given for you, urinary tract infarctions. So, so all them together. So if I'm just summarizing, this first of all, I'd like to confirm a diagnosis by taking the appointments with the scan of your chest and all the yes. lung function. And secondly, uh, along with the some of the blood tests and the echo appointments, and secondly, that you'll see the pulmonologist after he puts it back in, in your hands. And thirdly, that you are referred to the smoking cessation clinics for to quit the smoking. And fourthly, that the the social support will seek some of the social support, some of the supports at home, so that you can take care of your sons. So, does it make sense? Is that all right? Yes, doctor. Thank you. Are we happy with that? Yes, ma'am. So, yes, Mrs. Camel, so we talked a lot today, a lot today, and uh, I'm really sorry that you are suffering right at this moment. So, I think the, the management plan that we have done, and that will be really, really good for you. So, thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you once again. So, yes, my dear doctor, listen very carefully. You'll have the 14 minutes to talk to your patients, my to get the, all the data in your hands. After 12 minutes, the examiner will tell you, you have two minutes remaining. This two minutes warning, it does mean that you need to come up the feet bundle pack, my dear, the concerns, summary, and explanations all together. Within these two minutes, then you need to finish them. And after 14 minutes total, the examiners will stop you right at this moment, and they will say that the time is up, time finished. Then you need to stop. The examiner said to stop now. So you need to stop immediately after that and saying handshake and a good greetings and saying very good smiling. And this is very important. You see that at the end of the time that you say that, are you happy with that? The planning, the management plan that you have done. If you've got time that you can say, if you make the patients happy, so definitely the patients and examiners will be happy, my dear. In that way, we can satisfy the patients and getting the satisfaction from the examiners and getting the good satisfactory marks on the mark as well. So this is the problem list that in your hands that now that you need to discuss to the examiners the problem list. Immediately after the 14 minutes, time's up, so the uh, surrogate or with the actor and actresses will leave the room and you'll have the one minute to recollect your thoughts altogether and you need to reformulate the, the problem list that you made the five minutes preparation before entering the room the full consultations, my dear. So this one minute preparations that is really needed. And this one minute is really very vital to reformulate the problem list that you already made. And you need to got some of the added, some of the important things that, that should be added in your problem list and just give the examiners. The examiners will ask you so many questions, but the most important thing is that keep in your mind that the problem list that you need to say to the examiners. The, the things that you say to the patients in your patient's language or maybe living words, not using the jargon, but to the examiners that you need to tell like the way that the, we are presenting, my dear. So examiner will ask you the questions or you need to start your presentations. What do you need to tell? You can take the notes in your hands or you can directly present your case, my dear. The way that you need to present that I'm showing, my dear, you need to tell. So, my patient here, the Mrs. Camel, is a 54 years old lady presented with the shortness of breath and exhaustion and progressively worsening day by day for the last 18 months and the severity enough right at this moment she cannot able to walk more than 100 meters even a, doing an activity of daily lives interrupting her symptoms and also she cannot take care of her son with, us, with the cerebral palsy patient. Along with that, she has been taking for a long period of time, more than 10 years, the nitrofurantoin once a night, 50 milligram, for the recurrent urinary tract infections. So my putting all them together, my first clinical diagnosis, my diagnosis in our case, the pulmonary fibrosis due to nitrofurantoin, the first diagnosis. And apart from that, she's taking only the antihypertensive medications. And secondly, another, another, another possibility is there that she has, has to take care of her son's hobbies like the pigeons uh, and the 
cages that she need to wash and she need to feed, feed them. So there is an exposure to the pigeon. So extrinsic allergic alveoli is likely another added on with the differential diagnosis. And thirdly, as because she is a significant smoker, more than 20 pack a year, so she may have the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Thirdly, or maybe she may be added chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. But as because she said that she doesn't have chronic cough and not the productive sputum as well, so it's a less likely possibility the COPD. But yes, as because she is a smoker, significant smoker, so we need to stop it as early as possible. And thirdly, the differential diagnosis is the chronic heart failure because she is hypertensive for a long period of time and she is taking the two medicines, but the blood pressure is controlled right at this moment. So putting all them together, my critical diagnosis is the night to front to an induced pulmonary fibrosis, the first diagnosis, and secondly, maybe the extrinsic allergic alveolitis, thirdly, the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease because of smoking, and fourthly, that is a chronic heart failure. And this is, these are my differential diagnoses. And secondly, I would like to confirm my diagnosis by doing the HRCD test and the pulmonary function test and doing the blood test, including the complete blood count and also the chest X-ray and some autoimmune profile. And also to do the spinometry, yes. And I would like to request uh, for the blood test uh, including the complete blood count and also the autoimmune profile and also to do the chest x-ray and uh, to see the, to exclude the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease as well and also to do the echocardiography to see the heart status. And after having the reports and, and then the treatment should be started and the first, first line of the treatment should be started to stop the nitroponin doing immediately after the consultations that I need to do and uh, she was concerned about the lung disease, what, what happened to her and that will not be revert back to the normal state or not. And, um, and because of she's a smoker, so I need to refer her to the smoking cessation clinics and regarding the social concern, that is that she's a retired nurse and she has to take care of her son because of the normal activities is really interrupted. So yes, the social support should be provided to this lady to manage and to take care of our son. So these are the list of problem list that should be presented to the examiners, my dear doctor. So that's the way uh, that, that there's a way that you need to tell to the examiners. Then examiners may ask you so many questions regarding the what are the other causes of pulmonary fibrosis, maybe the COPD, maybe the heart failure, the different questions may be asked, but very rarely after having these discussions, Actually, there will be no time. There is a four time, four minutes discussions. So that's enough to know. And um, yes, having the satisfactory marks, I get 20 out of 20, my dear. I hope that, my dear, this nitroponatoin induced the pulmonary fibrosis. Mrs. Hava Kamel, this case that you enjoyed, my dear. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you once again.